And so that's that's a real concern. And I think it's all part of the same package. Yeah, and, and I think maybe part of the reason I'm a little less optimistic, and I mean, I, if I were totally pessimistic, I wouldn't written the book because I think there are things we can do. Um, but I'm a little less optimistic because I think a lot of these things that we're doing to challenge the law are only as good as the people we have who are enforcing them. And so by that, what do I mean? Um, you just touched on the Harvard Supreme Court decision, which says affirmative action is illegal in universities. So Missouri has a really excellent forward-looking attorney general. As soon as that happens, he cancels $16 million worth of race-based scholarships in the state. But I don't think any other state AG did it, right? Because nobody actually stepped forward and said, aha, I'm gonna go use this. And then the kind of real black pill, if you will, is to look at California. So California has now twice at the ballot box outlawed affirmative action by race in its universities. If you look at the statistics for admission, if you really squint, Greg Duche responded. Fun time in my life. It was so bad that when I had sexy time, I couldn't even finish. I kept thinking about what have I done to my life? Bro, what are you talking about? This is about fucking how he couldn't ejaculate. You liar. I got excited. I got so fucking hype. Is you're a hypocrite, Hassan? Avi didn't bang, by the way. A police department stage a school shooting with zero warning to a classroom. Real brain dead thumbs. Nice. Dude, less than average Joe, you're still being fucking annoying, okay? Just take an hour off. You're just being annoying every day. Please, please stop. You can maybe see a little bit of effect that that outlawing has had. Right. But it ain't much. This was, uh, that was funny. So I'm not going to lie. I've like, what was this video on you about? It's, just, it's about how I'm a hypocrite because I made fun of the way he looks. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. This shit is boring. <laughs> okay. There's only so much I can take of like a bunch of old ass divorced dads sitting around chirping about how white guys are under attack. White people are under attack. Get to the fun shit. Okay. Give me something more than just like, oh, in all my times of working at the federal agencies, I saw white people under attack and I did nothing. It's like, all right, pussy, you should have fucking done something about it then. So this you're, you're referring to, um, I think this was what, four or five years ago, they had uh, an, a, a, an attempt to amend the Constitution of California to allow them to discriminate on the basis of race right. in public contracting and education. Yeah. I remember I had a conversation with a friend of mine who was like, <clears throat> excuse me, like a woke LA actress. And I saw that she had posted in favor of it. And so I immediately I texted her and then ended up with a phone call. And I was like, so why do you think people should be allowed to discriminate against people based on their race? And she was like, well, no, this is to help, you know, minorities. Yeah, exactly. And I said, uh, what's the what's like the, the, the population breakdown of California? Like, what's what are the racial demographics? Let's let's actually let's pull this one up. I think whites are like 38 percent or something. So they're a minority. So 40% uh, are Latino, 35% are white, 15 are Asian, Pacific Islander, 5% are black. <clears throat> and I was like... No wonder fucking California is awesome, bro. Holy shit. For all of its faults and failures. Jesus Christ, thank God for fucking diversity. Jesus, Lord, mercy. I'm doing my part, okay? By making California more diverse, being a part of the minority, Okay. The white minority. I'm here, baby. I'm doing justice to the whites. You know, what's the breakdown? And then actually, let's let's do this. Los Angeles. I was like, uh, so the racial makeup of L.A. is 48.7% white. But that, in that includes Hispanics there. Like the oh, oh, dude, dude. <laughs> Mr. Race Scientist. Oh, that includes Hispanics, okay? They're not real white. Bitch, they're white. The fuck you mean? There it is. 
non-Hispanic numbers. Well, it says 44.6 are Hispanic or Latino. Right, because any it's, it's add, if you look at that, it's adding up to way more than 100, right? Because right, right, right. number of Hispanics who self-identify as white. So if I had to guess the white non-Hispanic number... Oh, right, doesn't make sense, does it? That. I asked her, I was like, do you think that in like these towns that in California that are predominantly white, do you think they're going to choose to be more or less racist? And she was like, what? Well, I, I would assume more racist. And I was like, why would you want to give them the legal right to do so? Right. And she didn't have an answer. I feel like a lot of these activists just want to be racist. <laughs> For real. I mean, that's it. I mean, like yeah. the, the outcome of, of, of amending the Constitution in the way they did, certainly at the state level could have some impact. Right. But there are counties that are predominantly white in California. There's the east, uh, 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 certain farming areas. And I'm like, that's not how any of this shit works. Also, the for certain farming areas are so funny. No, man, the majority in farming areas in California are not fucking white. That's only in your mind, okay? White people ain't farming, big dog. The fuck? <laughs> I don't think there's any point, there has ever been a point in American history, unless you're considering Hispanics to be white now, okay? But usually they're not the white Hispanics that are in the farming communities. But beyond that, dude, the, the notion that, like, you know, white people are farming out there is so silly, like the, the reality is, I think if California changed the amendment, these overwhelmingly white areas would not implement racial laws to protect white people. Right. The other counties that aren't predominantly white would absolutely pass laws to harm white people. Right. Well, the interesting thing on that, that uh, ballot initiative in California was every politician in the state endorsed, at least all the, the Democrats, which is everybody who has office. Um, they outspent the proponents. <laughs> about 30 to one or something preposterous. And everybody thought that they were gonna win. Um, and they lost 56, 44 while Biden was carrying the state with 63%. So I think the, the good news is that actually racially discriminating is sort of unpopular in America, um, at least when you sort of expose it to light. But the bad news is there's a lot of this stuff. And as you point out, a lot of this is coming out behind the scenes. And so, um, you know, I think part of my, part of what I'm trying to do in the unprotected class is just to to shine a light on it, to say, hey, this is going on. We According to the 2022 USDA Census of Agriculture, 95 percent of farm producers in the United States are white, which is about 3.2 million people. Yeah, that probably does not factor in migrant workers, which let's see. Farm workers. Demographics. You said farm producers too, but let's see. Demographics from the National Center for Farm Worker Health. Also from 2022, 2.9 million agricultural workers in the United States. They travel throughout the United States working as the backbone for the trillion dollar agricultural industry. The majority, 70% of agricultural uh, workers were foreign born. 63% of all agricultural workers were born in Mexico. 42% of Mexican born workers were from traditional sending states of West Central Mexico. 30% were born in the U.S. or Puerto Rico. 66% of crop workers were male and 34% were female. The majority, 78% of agricultural workers self-identify as Hispanic. 32% of U.S. born agricultural workers identify as Hispanic. Unless you're talking about the farm owners, that is not true. The majority, 62% of agricultural workers, reported that they were most comfortable conversing in Spanish. Does that make sense? Many who are considered farmers do not do the majority of the labor. There's a lot of jargon around agricultural workers and their demographics to suggest a higher amount of white people in the labor force. Yeah.
Size and composition of U.S. agricultural forest. In the 1950s, the number of farm workers was uh, totaling 10 million. By 2000s, that had whittled down to 4 million, less than 4 million, 3 million. Um, the U.S. agricultural workforce long considered a mixture of two groups of workers. One, self-employed farm operators and their family members, and two, hired workers. Both types of employment were in long-term decline from 1950 to 1990 as mechanization contributed to the rising agricultural productivity, reducing the need for labor. Since 90, employment levels have stabilized. The reduction in self-employment and family labor through the 1990 was more rapid than the decline in hired labor. Hired farm workers make up less than 1% of all U.S. wage and salary workers, but play an essential role in U.S. Uh, agriculture. Does that make sense to late night last night or no? I hope it does. So I don't know where you're getting that number from unless white just simply means like we now have any all. But the bad news is there's a lot of this stuff. And as you point out, a lot of this is coming out behind the scenes. And so, um, you know, I think part of my, part of some people is I think some of them like to be super intellectually curious, curious and say, ah, you know, it was just the Civil Rights Act. It was really horrible. Um, my view is Civil Rights Act of 1964 was a response to real problems that were existing. I mean, there was there was segregation, there was racism, uh, things had been improving, but it was not an unreasonable. It was a blunt instrument to solve a very real problem. And I think it turned out to be too blunt. It took away too many freedoms over the long term. And even more importantly, the deep state slash administrative state and future really dubious Supreme Court rulings and other things built on this and, and took it way away from what I think everybody would have wanted it to be in 1964. But having said that, I don't think you can tell this story without discussing <clears throat> the act. I don't think a lot of this happens without the Civil Rights Act in 1964. And I think without seriously amending our civil rights laws, I don't think we can fix fully some of these problems. But well, I also think that the, the the left has has made a calculated decision that they can, at least for right now, the best way to drive their agenda is through a lens of a discrimination. So they, they have co-opted a lot of good laws, like the, the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and, and other state and, and local laws um, that are really meant to be shields to protect people from discrimination based on immutable characteristics that they have no control over and they shouldn't be deprived of jobs or other things. Uh, because of, and they've decided to drive, you know, an agenda through that and essentially say there's a point of view or a perspective that you need to bend the knee to. And if you don't, we're going to use this as a, as a sword instead to you know, harm you, to run you out of business, uh, to litigate and make an you know, Oh, okay. This chatter actually sent a really good um, and valuable description, but got blasted by Fossabot for typing up a goddamn essay in the chat. What is it, PRzer? I was kind of on the, uh, I was right. Producer in the United States, agricultural policy is generally thought of as a farm operator. However, given the sometimes complex ownership and rental agreements of today's farms, the 2002 Farm Bill defines a producer for purposes of farm program benefits as an owner operator, landlord, tenant, or sharecropper that shares in the risk of producing a crop that is entitled to a share of the crop produced on the farm, according to Wikipedia. So farm producers, 90% of the farm, 97% of the farm producers are white, as in like the owners of the farms are white, whereas close to 70% of the workers on the farms are immigrant born, foreign born, uh, many of them uh, specifically Latin American. Latino, Hispanic. Sixty nine percent of hired farm workers interviewed in the fiscal years between twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen were born in Mexico. Twenty four percent were born in the United States. 
One percent were born in Puerto Rico, six percent were born in Central America, and a small portion originated from various other regions, including South America, the Caribbean, Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Eighty-three percent of all farm workers were Hispanic. So that's uh, that's the thing that a lot of people uh, that that designation of producer, farm producer, agricultural producer is a very nefarious one, specifically done to to I guess like um, go along with the narrative that it's like it's the white farmers, when in fact, uh, you know, aside from the owner operator white farmers. Many of the many of the relationship that farmers have, and you see this in like Europe as well. Oftentimes, people wonder like why farmer revolts are rather reactionary, right? It's because they're they're operating along class interests. They're capital owners. Anyway, vexatiously and make your life miserable. Our, our clients deal with this all the time. You know, we, we represented um, um, Jack Phillips uh, from Masterpiece Cake Shop at the U.S. Supreme Court. We won that decision seven to two back in 2017. He's still been sued today um, because other folks in Colorado didn't like the outcome of that decision and just took the non-discrimination there law and decided to attack can't believe this this was too boring for me to pay attention like low key but high key not gonna lie let's watch the fucking let's watch the brett cooper manufactured authenticity of brett cooper by jose for 27th 2023 miriam um before we get into jose you're gonna get into the top of the hour ab break which comes at the top of every hour 